Good morning, everyone. Everybody happy? Ready for a parade? Woohoo! It's a fabulous, fabulous day. We're going to get started here in a minute, but uh, we wanted to go through a little bit of the history. You know, this is the 50th year for the Celebrate CB event. Used to be called what? What did it used to be called? The Pride Parade. Absolutely. It changed in 2006 because the parade theme that year was Celebrate CB, and we thought, that's a fantastic name. So we stole it. My name is Lynn Brannigan. You probably recognize my voice. I've been doing the parade for um, oodles of years, except for the last two, uh, which there was no parade during the pandemic. I am joined today by Richard Warner from the Historical Society. And we're gonna give a, just a little bit, a few tidbits about the history of the event. Richard's got some great information that he uncovered in his research. Richard. Well, I think they had me come on board because you needed the sidekick or something, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. That is true, yes. Either that or it just looks silly if Lynn's up here talking totally <laughs> to herself. But, of course, the uh, you, things got started, really, the movement back in the mid-60s. Gaylord Anderson at Woodrow Wilson Junior High started a Pride Week down there. And that's what kind of slowly got things going and evolved into what we have today. Excellent, and uh, we thank uh, Heartland Properties, as always, for passing out the American flags. Why don't we ever get a flag up here in the booth? What's up with that? Never. We never get one. Oh, 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 now I'm being inundated. Now Excellent. That wasn't a... <laughs> thank you. She needs a replacement flag. I just got hers. Lynn, that was probably the least subtle hit I've ever heard in my life. If you thank can. you. <laughs> oh, 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 my God, we have candy. Served. Yay. Thank you very much. All right, back to business here. Um, just, a, just a few more little bits of information. The first parade went all the way down Broadway in April of 1979. And at the conclusion of the parade, this is a fantastic idea. We don't do that anymore. Um, all the floats circled around Bayless Park. And then there was an all-day celebration in the park. Um, I even know what it cost to eat a hot dog back then. Do you know? Uh, no, I don't. 25 cents. Wow. You could buy an ice cream bar for 15 cents and a drink for 10 cents. Oh my gosh, they even had roast beef sandwiches for 50 cents. Well, that a lot of planning went into that first grade. Paul Raymond, a second grade teacher at Bloomer School, was the one in charge of that parade, and it was going to it was touted as the biggest parade in Council Bluffs history. Now that's coming off of our bicentennial parade just three years earlier in 1976. So it was they pulled out all the stops, and I, and I think part of that was Raj Chopra, the superintendent of schools, idea. He felt that. Kids should have an opportunity to be in a parade. They may not totally understand the theme always, but they're part of the celebration. They were in that parade, and uh, he felt that this is something they're going to remember their whole lives. And so, Absolutely. you know, they made it a big deal. Yes, no, and it's, and it's great, and it's family-focused. Um, and every year in the parade, we do have grand marshals. And this year, because the parade theme is going for gold, we have three Olympians with us. And we're not able to give the full introduction when they're driving by, so we're going to take a few minutes and do that now. Um, the first one is Thomas Gilman. He's an American freestyle wrestler, graduated folk style wrestler, who, who competes at 57 kilos. How many pounds is 57 kilos? 130 maybe? 120? Silence. Nobody is doing math on a Saturday. Got it. He's a 2020 Tokyo Olympic bronze medalist and the reigning world champion, uh, finalist in 2017, and he's also the Pan American Continental Champion. Wow. Um, as an Olympic medalist, Gilman earned the right to automatically represent the United States at the 2021 World Championships without having to compete domestically. On May 8th of this year, he became the Pan American Continental Champion. Uh, you know, Lynn, I don't like to complain, but you're lucky that it isn't a teacher in charge of the parade again this year with those, you know, after admitting those math uh, shortcomings. So, uh, 
we, we want to raise the academic plane of this, apparently. So, uh, one of our other Grand Marshals is David Kilgarden. David's a native of Council Bluffs. He wrestled at Lewis Central High School, a three-time Iowa State High School champion with a career record of 133 to four. Kilgard was the first national winner of the National Wrestling Hall of Fame's Dave Schultz High School Excellence Award in 1996. He won three cadet national championships and five junior national championships and placed seventh at the Junior World Championships in Russia in 1996. As a high school junior at Junior Nationals, he defeated T.J. Williams, a two-time national champion with a career record of 98-1 to at the University of Iowa. In his senior year at Junior Nationals, he defeated NCAA champion and four-time top three finisher Joe Heskett to reach the finals, where he triumphed over a wrestler from Utah named Cale Sanderson. The eighth combined national titles is a record that has been tied but never broken. A true scholar athlete, Gilgard was valedictorian of his class and graduated with a 4.0 GPA. His career at the University of Oklahoma was hampered and cut short by knee injuries, but he twice qualified for the NCAA tournament and was Big 12 champion runner-up in 2020. And the third Grand Marshal is Josh Turek. He's an American wheelchair basketball player and a member of the United States Men's National Wheelchair Basketball Team. He represented the U.S. in wheelchair basketball at the Summer, Summer Paralympics four times finishing in seventh place in 2004, winning a bronze medal in 2012, and gold medals in 2016 and 2020. He is a graduate of AL. Here's a few of his gold medals. Uh, Four-time Paralympian, 2004, 12, 16, and 20. Three-time medalist, two golds and one bronze. And he, his world championship, uh, he won a silver in 2014. He competed in 2014. And I can't wait to see him and everyone go by. Because the parade will be starting here soon. Um, but the parade and the event would not be possible without sponsors. Sponsors are just absolutely vital to the week's festivities every year. Richard knows who two of our sponsors are. Tell us. Well, I, hopefully I know who they all are, but we'll take them one at a time here. So, okay, so I got them written down. It's not like I'm that smart, I know who they are, but Centris Federal Credit Union has been a part of the local community for 85 years. Founded way back in 1934, Centris is centered on the experience. For everything they do, they're focused on making a positive impact. And an experience where people know that they're appreciated and they're valued and that Centris is able then to guide them towards their financial goals. Centris now has two offices in Council Bluffs, offices in Grand Island, North Platte, and Tryon, Nebraska, and 10 offices in the Omaha metro area. Uh, though their roots are local, they have members throughout the nation and the entire world. Uh, another one of our sponsors is All Care, All Care Health Center. Now, All Care's mission is to provide affordable, comprehensive, high-quality health care to the entire community. And the vision of All Care is to strengthen access to quality integrated health care by removing barriers for those with the greatest need and developing community relationships to enhance the future of our community's well-being. And there are additional sponsors that we'll read in a minute, but uh, before the judges get busy with their duties, we do not want to distract them from their judging. I'd like to introduce to the crowd today's parade judges. The first one, and she'll wave, or her daughter will wave the flag, is Dr. Cristela Torres from All Care Health Center. She's the medical director there, and she's sitting next to, oh my gosh, hang on. That's on a different piece of paper. Too many sheets of paper. Here. I know. Bill Wypiski, he's the executive director. Sorry about that, Bill. I didn't turn the page. Next to Costella is Robert Ahrens from Centris Federal Credit Union. They are the presenting sponsor of the week's event, so we thank them very, very much. Next to Robert is Marty Brooks, who I think he tried to escape being a judge this year, but they refused to allow him 
So he's judge for life, I think. And next to Marty is uh, Natasha Skiles from Mid American Energy. You know, we, we, we can't read, we can't do much without light, can we? So that's pretty critical to the community. And we thank Mid American for uh, their sponsorship. And then next to Natasha is Bill Weggy. He's the head judge. Oh my God, for what, 50, 60 years, Bill? Something like that. <laughs> So uh, please give a round of applause to our judges because they have a big job. And speaking of the judges, they were out very early this morning and they already judged the school entries. So we will be finding out during the parade who won those. And then after the parade, the judges will be crunching the numbers and um, watch the 712 initiative page for the winners. And I don't know if he's on camera or if somebody can bring him to the camera or turn him around, but there is a gigantic golden hand carved, oh my God, I almost said owl. Um, it is <laughs> Chipper the Squirrel and that is a traveling trophy. So that's gonna go to the, the top parade entry and then, sorry to whoever that is, but you're gonna have to give it up because next year you're gonna be replaced, there'll be another one. Oh, no, they don't have to give it up, they just have to win again. Good point, very work? good yeah. point. And, uh, the, and you mentioned, Lynn, that the theme this year is, is going for the gold, that's because this is the golden anniversary of Celebrate Council Bluffs, and of course we're celebrating our Olympians. Do you mind if I throw in uh, the golden spike? Because this year is the 160th anniversary of the most significant thing to ever impact Council Bluffs, I'm gonna say, and that's Abraham Lincoln's designation of Council Bluffs as the Eastern Terminus of the Transcontinental Railroad. That changed everything. Amazing. And so let's throw in a little gold there as well, if you don't excellent, mind. Excellent, excellent. I can't wait to see, this is my favorite part coming up. I mean, how will the schools, the local businesses, how will they represent that thing going for the gold? It'll be amazing. But we also have to thank, sincerely thank, the 712 Initiative. 712 Initiative is, uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about 712 Initiative. They're aimed at improving the economic vitality and redevelopment areas through investments in built environment, activating public spaces, and delivering programs that increase social engagement and healthy lifestyles. And, uh, you know, honestly, uh, Cheryl Garst, every time I'm, I work with Cheryl on a project, I feel my IQ goes up for a few days afterwards. I mean, it goes down after that, uh, but oh it gets my. back to normal. But <laughs> no, I, they're just great people to work with, and, and I think we really owe them a huge thank you for getting this together. And I think they came on board with uh, Celebrate CD in probably about 2016, if I that sounds, uh, Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I, I mean, I do hear horns, so the parade is gonna be upon us before you know it. Um, I just don't want people to rush home after the parade because in Bayless Park, directly afterwards, our kids' activities from noon till 3 p.m. There's a treasure, a treasure dig, sidewalk chalk, pendulum painting, what's a pendulum painting? Interesting. Uh, touch a truck, there's a bike rodeo, pony rides, mad cow paintball, what? Uh, bubbles, cornhole, temporary tattoos, and much, much more. So, you know, I know a lot of folks are, and then, oh yeah, the carnival, carnival's gonna be going on. That's from 11 a.m. till 11 p.m. today. And then uh, tomorrow, from one o'clock to 7 p.m. A lot of people, you know, look forward to the carnival. And, and it's great that you can be at home listening to this on Facebook, but you know, if you happen to be in Council Bluffs, you still got time, it's a beautiful day. Come down live, or if you can't make it in time for the parade, bring the kids down to Bayless Park. This is a lot of things going on. It's something that they're gonna remember for a long time. Then I think the parade is finally- They're uh, here, and the first thing everybody's gonna see is the Celebrate CB banner. And look at those kids. They need whoops and hollers because they have perfect attendance. Congratulations, keep it up. Directly behind them is the color guard, the Council Bluffs Police color guard. Oh, my little brother Ronnie isn't out there. He told me not to mention his name and I had to do it. And like the good sister you are, you follow through with his desire. Yes, yes. but they, uh, they're celebrating CB through either. public safety. 
Oh, that was ROTC. Oh, that was the ROTC. Oh, my apologies. Oh, my brother's going to kill me. Yeah. He's going to kill me. <laughs> He's just going to kill me. Here is, uh, uh, yes, it was the AFJ ROTC Unit 1A951. Now we have Combined Vet Color Guard. My apologies. And right behind them is the National Guard, of course. And of course, Council Bluffs was the first city in Iowa to have a high school ROTC, so we've got a long legacy with that. And they're handing out candy. Good job, they're not throwing it. Excellent, excellent. You know, we don't want candy thrown because the kid, we don't, certainly don't want the kids running out there. Look at those tires. That would hurt. That would really, really hurt. But thank you for your service. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for being in the parade. And Mother Nature smiled on us all today. So that's fantastic. Here comes the Grand Marshal car. Special guests. We read all about them this morning. Is that Josh? Is that you? Thank you very much. Thank you for representing Council Bluffs so well. We're all proud of you. Aren't those medals around your neck heavy? <laughs> Is it real gold? Gold plated. Excellent. Uh, 14, 12. Carrot? All right, so five gold medals total, if my math is correct. Excellent, thank you for being here. And what's really heavy is the amount of work that went into earning those gold medals. You Absolutely, crazy. Okay, I'm gonna redeem myself. Here's the council boss police color guard, and I will not mention my little brother Ronnie, who is no longer a part of it. Did I do that good? Yeah, you, he'll appreciate that. <laughs> and following them, if my records are correct, and I'm reading correctly, I'm on track now, Richard, this should be the Knights of Columbus parade entry number four. Is that correct? City of Council Bluffs. What? Number five. Okay, so my records are not correct. The City of Council Bluffs. And you know what? Why are they dressed as bees? Does everyone know why they're dressed as bees? Council Bluffs was recently named a bee city. So protect those bees. I heard May was no mo May. And the mayor is not going to issue a citation for letting your lawn grow. Right? Right? He's laughing. He doesn't know. Of course, there's Chipper the Squirrel. Unleash, unleash your potential. Council Bluffs. And apparently they're hiring. He's green, do you see him? Oh, Shrek, right? So does Shrek work for the city of Council Bluffs? What do you think? They said they're hiring, you know. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. Equal opportunity employment. And of course, who doesn't love a fire truck? You know, this just might be the touch a truck in the park afterwards. Is that correct? No. Yes. <laughs> we don't know. If you see the big truck, you can touch it. I'm getting the thumbs up. Okay, now we have American Legion Post number two, the Rainbow Post. And that rainbow name came from a comment of General Douglas MacArthur in looking at the numbers of different people that were in the outfit in World War I. And he said, it looks like a rainbow. There's so many colors out there. And the name stuck. Uh, rainbow Point, Rainbow Drive, and Council Bluffs, named for, the, named for those those same heroes. And we're post number two, all because of a Model T Ford. There was a race to Des Moines to get the post registered. And the folks in Spencer took a Model T Ford, drove all night, and they made it to Des Moines first. So they got to be post number one. And we're a very close second. Wow, I did not know that. That information from Greg Cassidy, one of our historical society members, and quite the Legion Post historian. Now I know why you're sitting here. You have all this fabulous information because I'm sure most of the people 
watching here locally or streaming on Facebook Live, they can watch everywhere they are. I guess I didn't mention, along with my name, Lynn Brannigan, I'm the um, insane person who started Council Bluffs chat page and the parade is being streamed live on my page, hopefully. And it's on your page also, you manage on a page. Council Bluffs Revealed, if I did the punch the right buttons around Council Bluffs Revealed, the historic, one of the historical society's pages. See the Centrist Credit Union out there, Centrist Federal, certainly one of our fine sponsors that is helping us out today. They've grown a long way since that uh, less than $50 they started with back in the 1930s. Well, and I tell you what, I, I think I see the Olympic torch. Is that what I see? Hey, there we go. But he's not running. Why isn't he running next to the truck with the torch? He's already won. He's already won. <laughs> well, he looks very comfy, so that's great. And, and of course, Centris, besides being one of our sponsors, they are always immediately recognizable because purple, the color purple. And what is the NFL team or the basketball team that is purple and gold? What is that? I, my, I'm brain dead. Who? The Lakers. Oh my God. Why didn't I know that? Doll distributing. Look, we have a Clydesdale. He's not moving very much though, is he? But he certainly represents Budweiser, has for a long time. Absolutely, and um, you know, they brought the Clydesdales to West Fair, I believe, I don't know how long ago, but I remember going out there and seeing them. They're You've just, actually seen the real Clydesdales? Yes, yeah, well, oh, thanks really? to Doll Distributing, they brought, they brought the horses in for, um, to show the community, and it was, I mean, they're amazing animals. They are, they're large, but they're way larger. How cool, that would be something to see. And if you're... Uh, Palm Beach Tan, right in front of us right now, one of our fine sponsors. They pride themselves on putting the customer first. Customer satisfaction is what they say they are all about. And uh, I checked them up on the internet, and by golly, they got some really high ratings. So apparently they followed through with what they say. Excellent. And, and that was uh, entry number 10 for those folks following along at home. We are now uh, looking at Mid-American Energy. Mid-American Energy, of course, another one of the week's events and thank you for your sponsorship power to the people that's right <laughs> flashback to the 1970s there if you don't mind what are those decades I don't know. power to the people right now and then coming up next uh, you may not be able to see them around the wall i got a sneak peek um, they are also one of our sponsors of activities in the park afterwards this is the uh, central Ele uh, central athletics BAM, CrossFit, and The Hub. How many of you kids have been to The Hub? Yeah, I see lots of hands. Fun place, huh? Excellent. Good place for a birthday party. That is a good place for a birthday party. Okay, and this is still, this is parade entry number 12, in case you're Keep a track. Yeah, for those following along in a systematic fashion. Whoa, look at that. We got some tumbling out there. There's can you do that, Richard? Uh, no. No, me Never either. had, even when I was young. Never I will pass. That. I will that pass. That looks like a good way to break some limbs if I could. Yeah. I think we've got some talent here. I think uh, that, that shows a lot of practice. This just didn't happen overnight. Right, so. right. And I love these sparkly blue bows. Those are so cute. Good job. I even see a little red rag wagon. Are those still around? The rider? Is that what it is? The rider? They have canopies now. Oh my. I feel old. They used to be metal. Did it ever did, yes. Yes. Did you ever ride in a little red wagon? Yes, and mine was metal, if that gives you any <laughs> hints to the age. Didn't have a canopy, though. I bet the metal was hot in the summer. Oh my. Well, we didn't care. Whoa, wow, that's right amazing. Wow. I, three flips, is that what that was? Definitely got She did flip. not keep track, she, she just kept it? flipping. Just, yeah, I it, know. If it feels good to do it, she was having fun. Oh, All Care, all care Health coming by in front of us right now. Again, one of our primary sponsors here today. 
and they're striving to go for the gold by serving the community for another 25 years. Trying to remove barriers of all kinds, of financial barriers, physical barriers, that's what they're all about. Now, isn't that cute? Look at those little gentlemen with the top hat. This is Bloomer's Gentlemen's Society. It's an after-school program for boys in grades three to five. They, they develop into little gentlemen. As well they should, Dexter Bloomer was quite a gentleman. He was our first school board president. When he first came to Council Bluffs, he was appalled. He said every available building was converted into a gambling and drinking hall. And so he sought about to do what he could to upgrade the culture of our community. And that's still going on today, over 100 years later. That's amazing. That's some longevity there, isn't it? Oh, now look who we've got. Amelia and Dexter Bloomer. Yes. Elementary school Bloomer. As you know, the school was recently renamed Amelia and Dexter Bloomer School. It had been just Dexter Bloomer School. And there is a big Well, it's about time, isn't it? Yes. In fact, it's the only school in Council Bluffs that is named for a woman. And, and I, have, I have breaking news on this entry. They placed number two. Congratulations! And I know they took this, yeah, they, they took their research and all of this, this work very seriously in putting this, this together. The, the dedication of the new Bloomer Memorial Monument is going to be on the 27th, and the rededication of the clock, the 27th of this month. A lot of work is going on to that by a lot of people. We compliment Bloomer's principal, the Council Bluff School Board. Of course, the historic society's been trying to help out on that as well. All right, and following up on the second place finish, here we are, first place schools. Congratulations, kids. This is Wilson Middle School I lead. And my goodness, there are a lot of, what are those, flowers? Is that the old-fashioned flowers that you make in school? Does that make sense? Oh my God, how many hours did that take? Too many. Too many hours. What a great job. Well, and of course, it's fitting because at the, to, on the 50th year, Wilson is where the Pride program in Council Bluffs started. As we were saying earlier with Gaylord Anderson when he was principal, and Mr. Fred Maher after that. Uh, and so they really got the whole thing going. Well, you know what? They grouped all the winners together for us. Thanks, thanks for doing that, Bill. Good job. Next, we have College View Elementary, and they placed third. Great job. We're looking at not only students, but staff and parents. Welcome to the parade. Are you guys having fun? Yeah. Woo -hoo. And so College View Elementary, apparently you kids are gonna be going to AL High School based on your Lynx Pride shirts, is that correct? Nice, and you've got gold medals. Look, they've won gold medals already at their young age. Now how long did it take you kids to make that float? An hour? Oh, hour, multiple hours, there you go. I haven't been in a, uh, you know, that reminds me of hay rack rides. I, I can't remember the last time I went on a hay rack ride. Now I wanna go, but it's summer. You know, no, I can't come down, I would like to, but. <laughs> my court's not that long. Yeah. You can give me a ride around the block later, how's that? There you go. You know, what impresses me is I can hear a band coming. You know, when I was in school, uh, the band director said, if you can't play in March, just march. So we just marched. So we had a big band, but you couldn't really hear them. And I, but I can hear a band coming. All what right. Children's Square. Yes. All right. Certainly a long time Council Bluffs institution. Formed yes. uh, out of the flood of 1881, actually. A lot of misery caused by the flood of 1881. The water went all the way up to the downtown area, all the way up to the bluffs. A lot of people homeless. And Reverend Lemon at his church answered the call to help these people. That evolved into uh, Christian Home, which is today's Children's Square USA. And they work with children to achieve their personal get best, and they're always going for the gold. Immediately following them is the Charles Lakin YMCA. We can see basketball players. 
And they have a convertible for the 80 plus year old basketball players that used to play at the Y. Where's this convertible? Did I miss it? Leo, where's the convertible? It says you have a convertible for an 80 year old. Oh, gotcha, okay. The theme will be going for the gold at the Y for many, many years. All right, here we are. This is the Wilson Middle School Marching Band. Let's have a listen. Oh, the Disabled American Veterans now in front of us. The Colonel Donald McCray chapter number five. Donald McCray was the one who formed the world's first MASH unit. Uh, now, if you watch television, you think he came out of the Korean War, but that's not true. Uh, mobile unit number one was mustered right here in Council Bluffs. And I like what they say. They said, veterans roads aren't paved in gold, but the stairway to heaven is. Very deep. And right be behind them is Troop 537 and Pack 15, the Scouts. Oh, popcorn. Have you ever bought Boy Scout popcorn? It's pretty good. Well, it's not the Boy Scouts anymore. It's just Scouts, right? I got to get with the times. It's Boy and Girl Scouts. My brother was a scout. He used to sell that popcorn. It was good. He ate a lot of it. It's been a few years ago, but... Thank you very much. We went silent because they were given the Scout Pledge. I remember that from Brownies. Thank you for being here today. So you get a peek around that corner more than I do. Uh, what we got coming up the, uh, down the line there, Lynn? Can you tell? Uh, number 23. It's a candidate for um, county board. Right. And yeah. I am flipping through my pages here because the Boy Scouts reminded me we need to read what's going on in the park and the sponsors in the park, and I'm frantically looking for it. All right, here we are. We're going to shout out to our sponsors again super, super quick here. Centrist Federal Credit Union is the presenting sponsor. All Care Health Center is a gold sponsor. Mid-American Mid Energy is a gold sponsor. BAM CrossFit Central Athletics Cheer and Tumbling in the Hub. Trampoline Park is a silver sponsor. American Family Insurance John Drescher is a bronze. And Palm Be Beach Tan is a bronze. So again, this event would not be possible without cash and in-kind services. And I think you're going to mention the kids' activities in the park afterwards, right after the break. Don't go home. Got the treasure day, sidewalk chalk, pendulum painting, touch a truck, bike rodeo, pony rides, mad cow paintball bubbles, temporary tattoos, and more. All happening in Baylor's Park. And of course, the carnival starting at 11 o'clock. Also, the carnival tomorrow afternoon as well. And there, the and Cynthia. I'm sorry to interrupt you. There went my uh, previous co announcer, Justin Schultz. Now he's gone. All right, you all know who he is. <laughs> I think he's back. Hmm. Is he back? Yeah, he was walking the parade route backwards. I don't know. Did that mean anything? <laughs> I, I think have he just wanted to say no. Hi. He wanted to say hi. You were waving to you was that big a drop, sir. <laughs> and next was entry twenty-four. Every step, they'll be wearing lots of uh, lots of gold and gold theme items, and I they slipped by me. Oh, did you see them, Richard? They slipped by real quick, didn't they? because we got the Girl Scouts now. Yeah. Yes. And oh my gosh, Lemon Delights, Thin Mints. They're also giving the Scout Pledge.
Excellent, thank you very much. What's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Um, I think the uh, Thin Mint. It's a traditional, it's kind of simple, but there, I think there were some new ones this year. There, there are, yeah. And I, I, I mean, lemon's not really new, but Thin Mints taste better out of the fridge, though, in my opinion. I haven't tried that. No right. freeze is a good way to break a tooth. Though. Yes, we're at Sanders ATA Martial Arts. They teach their students to train to reach their true potential, to be their best, just like f going for the gold is another way of saying, be your best. So it fits right in with our theme today. All right, here we go with the demo. Excellent. That's a lot of kids doing martial arts. So nobody better mess with them, right? Next up, here we go. Little Central High cheer team. You think they're gonna stop and do a demonstration for us? Nope, they're just walking. But you know what? They represented the gold. Look I at the see, yeah. look at the colors in those pom poms. Holy moly, those are neat. Hologram kind of like. Here we go. Let's watch. Good job, excellent. Lots of talent there. Of course, Lewis Township named for the Lewis brothers, uh, the uh, five brothers that were early settlers in our area. I always thought it was named for Lewis as in Lewis and Clark, but that's not true. And it wasn't, really. No, it wasn't. I did not know that. And how do you how do you get all these tidbits, Richard? Where do you where do you find this information? Uh, well, you know, you just got a, a good. Uh, I joined the historical site it's back in those days. I knew there was some cool things around here, but I didn't know how to get that information. And so you, you couldn't Google it in those days. So we oh, no to Google. Uh, can you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, we better pay attention. This is, this is number 30, the Hanson House Assisted Living and Memory Care Residence. Look at that Model T trolley. Oh, and they got a great theme celebrating our golden years. Excellent. And even the horn sounds old. Can you imagine if cars these days had that kind of horn? It would scare the heck out of you. What is that? And we are now up to parade entry number 31 with Family Inc. Members from across all their agency programs will, will be represented and they promote awareness around services they offer to the community. I see the Wicked Witch of the West. Scary. This is the Kern Middle School Marching Links. Let's stand by and have a listen. I wish they would have stayed here and played more music, but the parade must roll on. Council Bluffs actually didn't have a school band until 1918. They didn't really? start in year one. I don't know why, but... I never knew that. There are a lot of things I never knew. And I know you're never going to invite a, a guy from the historical society back because you're excited him, but, but I'm having fun. And, and right behind Kern uh, is the jackets. Oh, here we go, another demo. Oh! Boy, I hope the cameras caught that. That was amazing. And again, I lost track of the number of flips. How many flips did you do? Nope, she's busy, don't interrupt. 
Three, thank you. Here we go. What's gonna happen? Whoa. I'll tell you what, my head would have been boom right on the cement. Great job, very talented. No way would I ever try that. Just a scratch. T.S. Bank headed up the line right now in front of us. So we should be seeing a 2004, uh, 2004 Ford Thunderbird. And according to my paperwork, they're giving out candy. Perhaps. I wonder if we'll get any. I better not say that because then we'll get candy and we have Tootsie Rolls here to eat. I did not eat breakfast, so thank goodness they're, the, the parade people are feeding us. Well, T.S. Banks, they've been around since 1923. Another long time Council Bluffs business. And they are chanting, but we can't really hear what they're saying because look at these motorcycles in front of us. You think anybody's gonna pop a wheelie? What do you think? Probably not. This is post number two American Legion Riders. They're a motorcycle group. And here we go, we asked for a comment about the parade entries. You'll never believe what they told us. Did you see that in the notes? Yeah, it says we're old. Can you believe that? We're old. And now, wait a second. He, he, that little guy looks like he's about four, five, six. There they go. He does have his parade wave going, though. Did you notice that? Thank you. Oh, my God. There's Thank you, T.S. Bank. Flavored Tootsie Rolls, my favorite. Now, if only I knew what those motorcycles were, are. I have no clue. But they're loud. They look really cool. And the guy with the vest and the black hat. That's my vision of a motorcycle rider. How about you? Okay, we've got the Veteran Suicide Awareness Association coming through now. The group helps local veterans and their families in need of assistance to bring awareness, to bring suicide and support veterans and their families from the invisible wounds of war. I think these kids out here along the parade route are gonna be on a sugar high before long. What do you think? <laughs> that's crazy. <laughs> you know, that's my first memory of a parade, which the candy. I, yeah. I think I was pretty little, the first parade I ever saw, and I remember the candy. I didn't know that was part of a parade, but I've been hooked on parades ever since. And I've been hooked on candy ever since, so what's up with that? I think every room in my house I have candy, mostly chocolate. We're, we are already up to parade entry number 37 with the Council Bluffs Dance Center. And you can't see them yet, but once they come around the, the wall here, they are sparkly. That's all I can say. I like the way they say they encourage their dancers to put their best foot forward. I guess that's better than being a left-footed dancer. <laughs> Very true. Now, you think they're going to do a dance number for us? What do you think? I'd be really surprised if they didn't. I see a lot of energy there just waiting to impress the judges right in front of us. Yeah, I'm tired just looking at them. And of course, keeping in with the go for the gold theme, that we've got some more sparkly, sparkly pom-poms. Plenty of gold out on the middle of Pearl Street there today. See, now I could do that. The, the, the tumbling, uh, no way, but I could, I could jump up and down. I probably can't wave pom-poms when I'm jumping because I'm not that coordinated. But they're doing good. And you know, that's what they're training for, so of course they're doing good. Here we go, Black Hills Energy. Uh, I think your car shrunk. Big guy, small truck. You know, what could be wrong with yeah, that? there you go. Now, that would be another touch of truck, wouldn't it? Yes. I don't know that they're going to be in the park, but you could touch that truck. That's an odd 
catchphrase. Touch that truck. <laughs> you know what's pretty descriptive, though? I, I don't think anybody would uh, be confused as to what they're in for. That is true. Next up, American National Bank. And I'm so shocked to see a tractor in Iowa. I'm absolutely shocked. That looks like Rick Killian up there. And I had a delicious steak sandwich yesterday at the Ad Committee Cookout in Bayless Park. So if you missed it, you missed some good food. But they're there every year, the day before the parade. And plenty of gold on that float. And they're gold level service, of course. Absolutely. As well. With the Olympic rings. So it's all about the gold. And you know what? They're a bank. Banks have gold. Gold coins, gold bars, I don't know. Rick, how many gold bars do you have in the bank? <laughs> All kinds, there we go. Now I don't know what, what year that international tractor is, and there's one behind it. 74? Um, there's a Kubota? What is that? Is that how you say that? Kubota tractor? Oh, this is nice. The Canesville Symphony Orchestra. And they are sounding good. They're doing it the right way. They're sitting and playing. That's excellent. Yeah. You know, somebody from the Canesville Symphony asked the Historical Society last year, when Council Bluffs first orchestra was formed. I had no idea, but I found out it goes way back, 1856. But think in those days, if you wanted music, you had to make it for yourself. So H.H. Uh, Field formed the Council Bluffs First Orchestra in one of those buildings that's still there on the 100 block, on the, one of the upper floors. So we've been playing music and CD for a long time. Now do they, I wonder if these schools do day trips to um, opera and symphony like they did when I'm when I was at school, or am I showing my age? Well, you must have come through in a more sophisticated era. I think our only uh, pilgrimage in school was to the public library. Wasn't a whole lot of singing going on. I see. Mildred Smock didn't permit that. We're at a very quiet place. Wait, what was that name you said? Mildred Smock. I know that name. Was yeah. she the library? Oh, why? She was head librarian for something like 150 years. Eh? Interesting. Well, there, there about. She was nice. She ran a tight ship, though. But I don't recall any singing. I'm not even sure whispering would have been permitted back That's then. true. That, yes. was, that was the only place we, we didn't go to. Gosh, you must have been to the higher brow high school than I went to. We, <laughs> we didn't go to the symphony. And, and again, quickly, before I lose track, you know, we have, we have... All right. What was that? Colts? Council Bluffs Colts Youth Sports Organization. I need to start paying attention again. They take pride in being a part of our community and supporting local sports. Every kid in this community has a chance to be a part of, our, of their organization um, and they raise sponsorships to cover that as needed. And did you know, Richard, that the Colts hold their players up to the standard of being accountable and to be peer-to-peer -peer role models of all ages? That's very important, I think in this day and age. You've got to have role models and you've got to be an example. It doesn't matter what age you are, you can set an example to your peers. I wonder what kind of an example we set sitting here. What do you think? Uh, I think I just set a bad example. I kind of went off the grid there, uh, not to leave you talking all by yourself, but I ate a Tootsie Roll. I'd forgotten how long that takes. <laughs> you know, so I, I think any level of good example probably just went right out the window there. Well, and I, I saw you eating that Tootsie Roll, and I'm starving, by the way, so I'm refraining, but I figured I would wait and cue it to you when I thought it was towards the end of the Tootsie Roll. <laughs> I don't know how I knew that. Oh my God, and, and thank you, young, young sir. Which organization are you from? You don't even know. Are you just a bystander? He's a spectator, yes. Oh my gosh. You can't have a problem. A without very, a very nice, nice spectator little spectator gave just gave me a Tootsie Roll. Can you believe that? This is my breakfast. I don't recommend eating Tootsie Rolls for breakfast, but now, I'm I think you've been doing this a long time. You said originally uh, you had to be out in the in the rain and the sun. This yeah. year we got a tent. 
Do you suppose maybe you could like wangle a breakfast or something for the uh, MCs in the future? I don't know. Oh, oh, wait, what you got? Oh. Oh. Wow. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm, candy is, is appearing from the skies. An, an airhead. I don't even know what an airhead is. Man, I'm old. Why do I keep saying that? Shut up, Brannigan. I, I think you might be asking what an airhead is, maybe uh, inviting some unfortunate commentary from the public, I suppose. No, that's a different kind of airhead, and I have displayed that tendency during this broadcast, so I'll, I apologize for that. Um, but we just got a starburst, and that is like my absolute... Thank you, you cutie pie. I love your pink outfit. Have you ever had a rain out? Talk about rain. Is the parade... In all of these years you've been doing it, it, it you, you talked about being out there in the rain, but the, but the show went on? It, it did, and the worst year was the year that uh, our parade packets were pink, and I was wearing white slacks. And so that did not end well in the rain that was coming down. But the parade kept going, actually. N no lightning, the parade goes on. And we've been prattling on uh, the Habitat for Humanity at Council Bluffs. Oh yeah, the Habit Restore is a treasure in this community. Uh, there are a lot of people that make use of that. Both mission and material, they help promote as we collectively celebrate Council Bluffs. And the Primrose Retirement Community. They're, they're probably in their, some of them are in their golden years, wouldn't you say? Uh, I believe they refer to themselves in their description as golden oldies. Golden oldies, ah. I'm surprised they're not playing golden oldies. Oh my three that are over 100, my goodness. They have three residents that are over 100 years old. Can you imagine? I think you can justify calling yourself a golden oldie at that age. Okay, so why, why aren't those people walking the parade? It's a joke. It's a joke. <laughs> yeah, have some arrogance then, I think. Yeah, gonna... <laughs> right. Uh, here we are with the Lions uh, Club of Council Bluffs. Um, and that is an antique John Deere. What year? 1941. 1941. Fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. Now, Lions, are those, is that the organization that collects the old glasses? I'm getting a yes nod. Yeah, Perfect. They've been around for 102 years. I can't, I mean, talk about longevity and the volunteerism. Yes, it's not easy to keep a, a group like that, that going nowadays with so many things, to, but to kind of reinvent themselves and stay up with, over 102 years is very impressive. And all of a sudden, here we are at, at entry number 51, Nutrition 712. They serve healthy stuff, from what I hear. Pretty delicious. In the 100 block. Oh, and they have drinks. Bringing happy, healthy, and major community involvement. With the famous fundraiser Fridays, giving back 10% of all sales to someone in need. That's a very nice thing to do, don't you think? You bet it is. So we're now at uh, City Light West CB. And they are promoting their vacation Bible school. And the theme is Raised to Life. And look at those gold balloons. You know, it's nice to see that the, there are, number one, floats in the parade. Um, it's more entertaining than, you know, just a group of people walking. Oh, that's okay, too, but the floats are nice. You know, it does, and I, I think that's been kind of a Council Bluffs parade tradition over the years. Uh, now, notice, notice chasing after the float is a zombie, okay? Trying to get that gold without earning it. Right, and yes. It takes all kinds. Yeah. I, I, the I'm not Note understanding the zombie, the zombie but it, it, it looks painful. And next up is In Motion Gymnastics Booster Club. And in gymnastics, of course, an Olympic sport, they're always striving to go for the gold. Oh, you think they're gonna do something for us? Are they gonna do something arranged? More flipping. Uh, more, yep. I'm, so. I'm getting yeah, a headache so looking at this flipping. Here. Wow. I had vertigo for two Great years. job. Great job. Oh, uh, even 
even a, a balance beam. No, wait, those are the bars, the bars, not a balance beam. Also an Olympic sport. And look at the sparkles. I love gold. Except I'm wearing silver. What's up with that? All my silver jewelry. I do have one gold, two gold bracelets amongst my group, so I guess I'm, I'm there. But have you ever done the beams? Have you ever done the balance beams? Uh, no. It looks like a good way to fall off. But, uh, for me, but I hold the handrail going down the stairs. <laughs> Well, that's good. Sense of balance is maybe not going quite the way Yeah, yeah, I see that. And next up, entry 55, is CHI Health Mercy Council Bluffs. Now, this is an interesting set of Olympic rings. It represents Mercy's five-star rating, which is... You want to read the ratings? Safety, reliability, patient experience, health, and quality. Well, that's a good group of ratings, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I think that's definitely something to be proud of. My daughter was born in uh, Mercy Hospital. Uh, one of my son's was. Well, oh, my God. I am, I am like dying here because I really don't want to eat candy for breakfast, although I will. I Jimmy John. Jimmy John's for the rescue. All Woo! right. And, and this is hilarious. So the theme of the parade is go for the gold. In their write-up, they say, we will not have a theme. We're handing out sandwiches. <laughs> you know, and I think that is okay. Uh, but we can sacrifice a little gold for the sandwiches. Works for Absolutely. Me. Absolutely. And, and uh, I just looked over to the left and I see Kent with HZ Productions who's doing all this uh, equipment and the sound and cameras. And he's eating his sandwich. That's not fair. We can't eat yet. <laughs> I had enough of a bad experience with the Tootsie Roll taking a lot yeah. of time. Uh... I mean, we could eat, but it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be pretty. I do want to thank uh, Kent from HZ Productions here. He does a wonderful job of making us look as professional as possible. I mean, you can only only do so much, I suppose, but... And, and not that I want to keep talking about touch a truck, but here, here we have Ready Mix Concrete, Lime and Ritchie Corporation, who, by the way, helped us with the concrete down at the Dream Playground when we rebuilt that a couple of years ago, so that was nice. But um, that's a pretty, pretty interesting truck. It's a big truck. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that I want to touch it for some reason. I don't understand. That touch your truck has really gotten to you, hasn't it? <laughs> it has. <laughs> and uh, next up, it's uh, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate, the Good Life Group. And they're celebrating home ownership in our community. And check out that house. Now that, you know, the rage across the nation are, are tiny homes. And that is really tiny. But it's super cute. And they have, are those fresh flowers on your float? Oh, sure, yeah, she winked, okay, I, I, yeah, I, yeah, craft store, I'm sure. All right, next up, we have a special, a special part of the parade, and I'm gonna turn the announcing over to Travis Drews, trustee of the Shriners, and thank you so much for being here. Oh, we're glad to be here. No parade is complete without the Shriners. So here we got our Legion of Honor, and with our Legion of Honor, we have our Devan members, which are basically our board of directors for Tangier Shrine. We've got our potentate, Bill German and Lady Colleen. Our assistant, or I'm sorry, our chief Raban, Paul Gonzalez. we got our assistant Raban, Brian Deming. Our high priest and prophet, Paul Bohannon. And our recorder, Chuck Sohn. And I tell you what, they have practiced their parade waves, haven't they? Oh yeah, we, we have lots of practice. We do about 17 to 18 parades every year. So wow. We what love parades. Great service. Here we got our shrine clowns. <laughs> and how many clowns do fit in the clown car? 32. 32, oh my God. You <laughs> Skids, you had five bean chili last night, so only one. 
Oh my. And don't go into details, please. And here we got a, one of our hospital vans to transport kids to one of our uh, outreach clinics and or one of our hospitals, our road runners. And I love the tiny cars. I don't know why. And that's oh, yeah. even better than touch a truck. <laughs> They're fun. I, I got into one one time and took a while to get back out of it, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> this group here is our, road, or, I'm sorry, our hospital flow. These guys, uh, every shrine and uh, unit and club is really important in raising awareness for what we do. And that's helping children with orthopedics uh, uh, problems and uh, prosthetics and burns. And it's all at no cost, is that correct? No cost, uh, uh, regardless of the family's ability to pay. Amazing. So we find a way to get them to one of our clinics and get them back, um, no cost to them. And you've got 22 hospitals and four burn centers. That's, that's nationwide, correct? Yes, and we have a center in uh, Canada and also in Mexico. Nice. And now this car, uh, Travis, tell us more about it because every time I see this car, I think of Animal House the movie. Oh yeah, this is our director staff. Uh, their job is to basically, they, they help raise funds with the Shrine, as all clubs and units do. But uh, they, these guys do a special job of ushering in new members to Tangier. Here we have our Corvette Club, and every time I see these guys, I see a different car, it, and I've never seen before. Some of the guys, uh, they change out their cars several times, and uh, they're, these guys are pretty cool. Well, and who doesn't love a vet? Come on. <laughs> I want one, but my wife says I can't. <laughs> So now, how many how many vets are there in your club? I mean, I know all of them are not here. All of them are not here, but there are roughly 50 members of the Corvette Club. Wow. And do you ever go to a parade where all 50 cars are included? Um, there is one where most of them uh, the, the, that will be at one of the parades in this. We do a competition with other shrine centers in the Midwest, and we get together and have a big powwow, and it's, it's a lot of fun. We uh, get to compete, show our cars, uh, a lot of little stunts with the little cars, and uh, our clowns compete. It's a lot of fun. Do the, do the vets race each other? Uh, that would be kind of dangerous, confirm, probably. Cannot confirm nor deny. <laughs> All right, my lips are sealed. <laughs> Yeah, some of the other uh, maladies that we help uh, children with also includes uh, spina bifida, um, let's see, uh, bone deficiencies, brittle bone disease, uh, cleft uh, palate, cleft lip. So th 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 it, there's a quite a few, there's a big gambit of what we help kids with. Some kids have uh, uh, cerebral palsy and we can help them with uh, certain situations with that. All right, well, I'm going to hand the microphone over to Richard because I see a Ford Mustang. Do <laughs> you know anything about Ford Mustangs? Yes, this is our Vintage Iron Club. All right. And all these cars uh, with the, that, that are members of Vintage Iron has to be, I believe, a 1974 or older vehicle. You know, I all was American thinking it was kind of looking like my high school parking lot. I, you know, this is cool. Oh, yeah. This is the way cars are supposed to look like. Oh, yeah. They're all those old muscle cars, that's oh our favorite. <laughs> that's a beauty coming up now. Travis, what is that make and model of this car? What's that? What's the make and model of this black car? No, I, I should know it. I, I know these guys like the back of my hand and I, ugh. Oh. I, can, I can't even read the back fin. Oh, it's a yeah. Bel Air. A Bel Air. No, I was a Ford man. My first car was a 56 Ford. And, uh, you know. It's a 57 Chevy. 57 Chevy, okay. 57. 57 Chevy. A 1957 Chevy, yeah, okay. Right here is our Mobile Nobles. This is the old 357, the traveling man of Tangier Shrine. This is our mobile billboard of Tangier. These guys, uh, one of their fundraisers is they also do birthday parties. Kids love that, go on the train and go for rides. Now these guys are more of my alley. This is our big wheels of the shrine. These guys just started their club roughly three years ago. 
So they're pretty new. Uh, a lot of them are, some of these guys belong to other clubs in the inner of Tangier, but uh, most of these guys I know pretty well. And following up is our provost. These guys help us uh, do a lot of security work when we have parades, keep our members safe. But if anybody is interested in becoming a Shriner, just check out www.beashrinernow.com. Thank you, Travis, for you being here with us today. Appreciate your commentary and the knowledge that you provided. Not a problem. And we love Council Bluffs. We're, you guys are a fantastic neighbor, so we well, love you guys. We'll hope we see you next year. Yeah. Take Thank care. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd say Tangier is kind of synonymous with the parade. They make a parade, don't they? They, they absolutely do. do. And it and looks like they have fun when they're doing it. That's yes, right. That's I want to I want to ride in the little car one day. We've got the Lewis Township Fire and Rescue, um, which, if, if I'm correct, is all volunteer. Is that correct? I believe so. They started out actually as the Lake Manawa Volunteer Fire Department. I just learned really? that last week. Wow. In fact, the first fire truck was a pickup with a plant sprayer donated by Nielsen Nursery on the back. That's a long time ago. So they look how far they have come since then. Again, all volunteers. You are a fountain of information. Useless information, but that's okay. No, 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 no. Now, so we're up to already 62. Fraternal Order of Eagles, CB number 104. And they've got, of course, an eagle. Oh, is that a baby eagle in a nest? How clever. Oh my gosh. So cute. It's a what? A parrot. No, it's an eagle. It's not a parrot. You're trying to trick me. I think they're messing with you. Eagles have a white head. That's how you know. Eagles have white heads. You know, I learn lots of things every day, and so... You know, and I think since the group was the Eagles, I was kind of maybe thinking along the Eagle line. If it had been the Owls Club, though, different. different. Right. I mean, and, I, and my first inclination was, that's an Eagle. Oh, here we go. And that was the Active Stars, a nonprofit, low-cost cheer program for ages 4 to 18. And they try and go for the gold because there's winners in the cheer competitions. And the Heritage at Fox Run is next. Uh, they've got some golden elements to their van, don't they? That's very nice. And also candy, lots and lots of candy. Oh, kids, don't don't throw. Walk towards the sidewalk in the hand, please. We don't want anybody getting run over. Thank you. Now that is a truck. And I would like an ice cold Coca-Cola, please. <laughs> Thank you. That's a gorgeous truck. A 51 Chevy, and of course, red. Look at how clean those tires are. Fabulous. And if I'm not mistaken, Central Latino, is that correct? Yeah! Celebrating 20 years supporting the Latino community through outreach and advocacy, housing stability and economic mobility, engagement and leadership formation, and cultural integration. It's great how they cheer on cue, wasn't it? We did not practice that even. Bethany Lutheran Health Services. And this shows how they have rebuilt after COVID. All right, let's do some wheelchair dancing. Come on, come on, ladies. Here we go. Oh, I'm sorry, and gentlemen. <laughs> There's a guy out there. Excellent. And the arm dancing, woo! Doing good. All right, you think they practice? How many hours did they practice? What do you think? Maybe it's just natural talent, Lynn. Possibly. I mean, you know, they're, uh, they've, they've been around a few years, so they know what they're doing. 
have seen the dancers, not their first dancer. <laughs> and let me mention too, though, I want to uh, also make reference to our uh, thank again, our Central Federal Credit Union as our sponsor, one of our sponsors today. They started in 1934 by workers at an Omaha phone company. Banks just weren't meeting their needs. So seven members started their own organization. And now over 85 years later, um, they've got over 120,000 members, adopted the Central's name in the year 2000, and go on strong. We're glad to have them as sponsors. And we, we just want to remind folks again that, you know, don't leave after the parade. There's still a lot going on in the park from noon until 3 p.m. All sorts of kids' activities. They are free. Uh, the carnival is also running till 11 p.m. tonight. That seems kind of late, don't you think? Are kids out th at 11 p.m. now? Kids probably are. I wouldn't be. Uh, I know that's past. They can wrap it up at 8:30, and I'd be fine. But uh, right, right. But um, but you know, there's something for everyone in the park, and it doesn't cost a lot of money. A lot, a lot of the things are free, and again, that's thanks to our sponsors. Yeah, good family activity. Another one of our sponsors, All Care Health Center, actually started the same way our first hospital did back in 1886. A group of concerned citizens got together because of a need. And All Care Health traces its roots back to 1997, when a group of citizens again came together to provide basic primary health care in an apartment in the West End. Today, the modern facility is almost 20,000 square feet at 902 South 6th Street and is a one-stop shop for primary health care. All right, and they're, they're slipping by us, but that's Woodman Life. And they were founded in 1890, striving always for the gold standard. Followed by Cobalt Credit Union, a financial institution that is always very involved with the community of council. Now members. the paperwork says there's a mascot. I'm trying to find the mascot. Oh, he's got the cushy seat in the vehicle. It's a long route, you know. But I want to know what the mascot is. What is that? It's a dog. There we go. Now I can see. It's kind of like Snoopy, the bit with that big nose, don't you think? Looks like Snoopy. Don't old dogs have big noses? I've always been a cat man, so. Yeah, I like cats. I tell you what, one of the, one of the popular posts on, on uh, Constable's chat was when I said, show us your pets. People went nuts. <laughs> I, there were so many dogs and cats and lizards. <laughs> oh, oh, we have a dog. He's walking. This is Madness Haunted House. They say they're the first and only haunted house in Council Bluffs since 2016. Hey, we've even got, we do a lot of interesting history things on our YouTube channel at the Historical Society. We have one called Fright for a Fee, a history of haunted houses at Council Bluffs, which started about 1970. Go to YouTube, search on Council Bluffs history, and odds are, are videos to be the first to come up. Now, where is Madness Haunted House? Where is that located? Pioneer Trail. Pioneer Pioneer Trail. Trail. Thank you very much. I, you know what? When I, years ago, when I was in the JCs, we did our, ha the Haunted Squirrel Cage Jail. And I tell you what, I was scared. I don't know why, I just was, I was scared. Oh my God. This you know, it was definitely oh. one of the big ones. Well, be, think about it. Hold your kids. He's coming at you. The building was made not to be able to get out of. That, that, was, that was the whole idea. Of so, course, of course, yeah. yeah. Well, it's it was scary enough for me. We do the flashlight tours now at Halloween. We don't do a haunted house there anymore, but uh, but it certainly was a haunted house for many years, thanks to folks like the JCs that were co-sponsored. And there is uh, Elks Lodge. We are, my gosh, we're up to 70. Entry 70, the Elks, Iowa Elks Association. And because we have such gorgeous weather today, he's probably not even overheated in, in the elk outfit, don't you think? <laughs> Actually, it was one of this group that laid the cornerstone for the building right across from us in 1903. It really? was H.A. Uh, Surley, exalted ruler of the Elks that laid the cornerstone of the Carnegie Building. Interesting. And that's such a beautiful building. I'm glad we get to sit here and look at that building. Oh, really absolutely. Nice. And I can see the, the jail also. I've never been to jail, though, so I think that's a good thing. 
<laughs> it's a record I'd like to keep intact. We that's, get a few people who come in that have been spent some time there as a guest of the county, but oh, now that's a beauty. Those were all over that Bel Air. Okay, okay, I know what it is. You want to test me? It's a 1957 Bel Air. Is that correct? You still have that written I, down. I, I, I know that because it's in my that. notes. Yeah, that's the I only that. reason I know that. But it's a very interesting color. Um, you know, some of the old cars, they have very interesting colors you don't see nowadays. A lot of two tones. How, how would you describe that? Is that brown and beige? Brown, but that is that real brown? It looks like butterscotch, almost. Lynn, guys see brown. We don't see butterscotch. Okay, oh. it's oh. it's oh. brown or it's green. Sorry, we, we don't, oh. we don't do that. <laughs> well, Alter Metal Recycling—they're the largest recycler in the United States. I did not know I that. I did not realize that. But yeah. yeah, definitely a fixture there on Ninth Avenue for a long time. Sixty years. And uh, following them, and this, of course, signals the end of the parade. Arrowhead Towing. And we'd like to thank our sponsors again. Richard will run through those in a second, but I also want to remind people that the judges are now done with their job, and part two of their job is to crunch the numbers and figure out who the winner is, who's going to be holding that cool looking hand carved gold gold black squirrel that's interesting and i don't envy them we saw a lot of impressive things go by in the last hour or two and so they've got a tough job ahead of them and uh again richard will go through the sponsors again but before you guys leave i want to remind you please uh pick up the bits and pieces around yourself and put them in the trash can we would appreciate that enjoy the uh, festivities in the park and I'm going to flip it over to Richard for um, mentioning our sponsors before I do the wrap-up. Let me just throw in one thing quick, yes. Lynn. At breakfast yesterday, we walked out, and one of the ladies in the place said, oh, there's going to be a parade. I didn't know about it. And that's a problem in Council Bluffs, uh, getting the word out. So I'd like to just recommend that uh, people sign up for the uh, seven, uh, let's call the uh, Unleashed CB. It's a, a weekly calendar that comes out. They try and get everything. And uh, uh, I hear tell there's a, a, a good uh, Facebook page out there too that uh, a person could maybe get involved with. Uh, yeah, I know what you're, I know where you're going. Um, yeah, Council Bluffs Chat. You know, when I started that page back in 2019, I thought, man, it'd be great to have a thousand members. And we are almost ready to cross the 12,000 member mark so it's and and it's the people on the page that that put the content and make it so entertaining uh, informative it's you know it's really great and uh, we are live streaming the parade uh, on my page as well and on and on your page council bus reveal council bus reveal is the historic study page and uh, we tend to put a historical bent on things but keep in mind history is something that happened five days ago too so but but yeah I, lynn's council bus chat i think if you get on Get on the Unleash CB mailing, go to join Council Bluffs chat, then you will know what's going on in Council Bluffs, and you won't miss anything, because there's a lot of cool things right, going on. Right, and you know, I'm kind of disappointed. I, I put on the Facebook page, hey, I'm going to be announcing, come, come by and say hello. Nobody said hi to me You know, today. I've not had any requests for autographs, but I, we did get that sandwich <laughs> and some candy. We did. And, and a flag, and I'm, so... Uh, I'm good. Well, I'm I, good I, that. I think uh, that's a wrap on the... Celebrate CB Parade. This is the 50th anniversary of the parade, and uh, let would... me run through these sponsors. Please. Yes, please. Uh, we've got uh, we, we, very, very deep thank you to Cent First Federal Credit Union, All Care Health, Mid America Energy, Bam CrossFit Central Athletics Cheer and Tumbling at the Hub and Trampoline Park, American Family Insurance, John Drescher, and Palm Beach Tan. Thank you again for coming out today. Uh, wonderful weather. Please head over to the park and uh, keep participating in the fun. And we're signing off from the 2022 Celebrate CB Parade in downtown Council Bluffs going for the gold. Thanks Thank you, everyone. Thank you.